What's next for the Scranton School District after water tested positive for lead once again in several of its buildings? And the lead levels are being considered unsafe for students and staff to drink or use. Eyewitness News reporter Cody Butler joins us live tonight outside the administration building with more on the story. Cody. Nate Candace, good evening. The issue was discovered during a lead test, which has to be done each year. The news of the unsafe levels now has some people concerned. During a meeting Monday, Scranton School District officials announced unsafe lead in its water. Some students are now having to use plastic cups from a top loading water dispenser. Remediation efforts have been undertaken already. What fixtures have been turned off? What fixtures have been labeled? 33 of its 38 water fountains and sinks tested positive in nearly 10 of its buildings. In 2016, the district tested water in all of their buildings and showed elevated levels of lead. In 2018, it became a mandate in the state that school districts must test their water for the chemical each year. The district's test in 2018 and 2019 came back the same as 2016. Unfortunately, there is no documentation that I have been given yet that gives any indication whether or not remediation efforts were addressed in 2016. Well, dating back to at least you know my years at West High School between 94 and 98, if there's problems now within these schools, there was definitely problems back then. Kevin Manley's son attends West Granton Intermediate School. Manley is worried his son and others could be exposed to chemicals by water and air. It's been an ongoing issue and it's something that needs to be taken care of. Children under the age of six are at highest risk of experiencing effects of lead poisoning. Dr. Aaron McFadden of the Wright Center for Community Health says symptoms can be abdominal cramping, constipation, and neurological. Dr. McFadden suggests if adults or children feel these symptoms to see a doctor. We have screening capabilities right in the office where we can check blood levels prior to them leaving. Scranton Superintendent Melissa McTiernan says, quote, this testing was part of our already established protocol to identify issues. With student staff and visitors in mind, we're working with our environmental experts to continue to ensure the safety of all who use our buildings. With the age of their buildings, they're now dealing with asbestos as well. John Adams Elementary School's gymnasium had to be closed because of asbestos exposure. If you would like to see the superintendent's full statement, head to pahomepage.com. For now, we're live in Scranton. Cody Butler, Eyewitness News. Questions, concerns, and in some cases, downright anger from parents and students in the Scranton School District. Lead and or asbestos problems in their schools has now forced four schools to close. Prescott Elementary School is now among them until further notice. Our lead I team reporter, Randy Mahalshik, live in Scranton with more on this one. Andy. Good evening, Nick. Parents we spoke with say they understand that problems come up in all school districts, especially those with older buildings like here in Scranton. But what they don't understand is, especially when it comes to lead, is that those issues were talked about here back in 2016, nearly four years ago, and nothing was done about it. So we came here to the school district administration building looking for answers. It's canceled today? Mm hmm Oh, okay. So, um, obviously you didn't know, so you were a little surprised? Did you not, you didn't get the message from the school at all? Uh, I don't revisit my cell phone. The surprise, but anyway, I'm going home. And that scene was repeated over and over again Thursday morning as parents, some unaware that their child's school was closed due to asbestos and or lead concerns. Hazmat crews are now at Robert Morris Elementary School, Francis Willard Elementary, Prescott Elementary and the Northeast Intermediate School. Air testing and water quality tests are underway. So is work to fix the problems. But many folks are asking, especially when it comes to lead contamination, why is this such an emergency now when water testing in 2016 showed elevated levels of lead in some of the schools? To think that this is a problem that might have been left unresolved is frustrating, disappointing. That is certainly not the way we want to operate today. Scranton School Board President Katie Gilmartin was not on the board when the 2016 lead results were released to the public. She does not know what happened. Because there is no documentation, 
we don't know whether something was done or not done. Did somebody drop the ball with this? When you're saying no documentation, it's almost hard to believe that in this day and age there's no documentation with these tests. Right. It is. It's, it's impossible to believe that there's no documentation, and unfortunately, that's what we are finding in a, in a lot of scenarios with, with the district. Now, Wild Witness News did make several requests to interview the superintendent on camera about the ongoing situation here in the Scranton School District. At about 2.15 in the afternoon, we got a phone call from her assistant saying that a news release would be sent out. I once again made a request for an on-camera interview. We were told she's simply too busy right now, but they would get back to us. The asbestos and lead concerns in the district have people in this city talking. We stopped by Antonio's Pizza. Its owner says he was stunned by the news. They have to do something with the school. They have to do it, you know? And that's what I think, and no matter what, what cost. Now, in that news release sent out by the superintendent, Melissa McTernan, she said the district is working with their environmental teams to make sure all schools are safe. Testing will be done before those four schools are reopened. It's still unknown if other schools are affected. Now, the school board president, Katie Gilmartin, told me that all 16 buildings in this school district, including the stadium, will be tested for possible health issues. Again, no, long, no word how long that could take or how much it will cost taxpayers. We'll keep you posted. Reporting live in Scranton, Andy Mahal, Chicago Eyewitness News. The Scranton School District is releasing its lead and asbestos reports from last month. This comes as several schools are closed until the problem's fixed. Eyewitness News has been following developments all week long. Cody Butler continues our coverage tonight from Scranton. Cody. Mark, good evening. It's unclear tonight if those schools will reopen Monday. The newly released reports indicate what exactly was tested and where the problems are. Day two, four schools in the Scranton School District continue to be closed Friday for either lead, asbestos, or both. I, I feel bad for the current board because they, they truly do have the kids' um, health and safety at heart. Vivian Williams has been finding sitters for her children since Wednesday evening, waiting to see if classes will be held next week. When they release the information and you have to scroll through these reports that a common citizen probably wouldn't understand, it it just makes it even worse. The environmental reports made public by the district indicate 19 buildings were tested for elevated lead levels. Eight of them tested positive, including sinks in the concession stand and locker rooms at Memorial Stadium, where the track and field and football teams play. We also know asbestos remediation is happening in at least four schools. If the asbestos is bound tight and it's not damaged, it's really not a concern. It's considered safe. Eyewitness News spoke with the general manager at Disaster Blaster about what happens if it does break, which calls for remediation. The fibers from the asbestos are released from that material, gets into the air, people breathe it. To see all 37 lead and asbestos reports, head to pahomepage.com. There you will also find an action plan with what the district says they will do. In Scranton, Cody Butler. Eyewitness News. Concern and uncertainty, two key words in the Scranton School District. Cody, thanks. Minutes, Josh, thank you. The Scranton School District is being sued by three of its own. A principal, reading teacher, and a former maintenance worker filed a federal lawsuit today. This coming just two weeks after the district released lead results for December, which then led to an asbestos problem. Eyewitness News reporter Cody Butler is following the story. He joins us live outside Federal Courthouse tonight with more. Cody? Nick, good evening. The lawsuit is 50 pages long and was filed here at U.S. District Court. It goes into great detail alleging what the district knew, did, and didn't do. A federal lawsuit has been filed against the Scranton School District. The plaintiffs, William Prescott Elementary School Principal Albert O'Donnell, a reading teacher at Northeast Intermediate School, Rebecca O'Brien, and George Gavaris, a district maintenance employee, retired in 2017. There needed to be some type of action taken uh, in response to the Guzik Associates report. Patrick Howard is representing the district employees plus all others similarly situated. In the lawsuit, it lists the district's knowledge of asbestos and lead in schools from its published reports. The problem with asbestos exposure is you don't know um, the long term, sometimes not for 40 years. Uh, then with lead, 
I mean, the, the lead, different from adults and children, has a much higher impact. In the lawsuit, 15 current and former board directors between 2016 and 2019 are listed as defendants. In 2016, um, you know, there was form of notice given to these people. And then again in 2017 and 2018, as we lay out in the complaint, that literally someone should have done something. I hope something happens. Like, it's not right. These kids are supposed to be safe at school, not you know, having something happen to them medically. Marissa Davies says her seven-year-old first grader has an appointment this week to get tested for lead that was confirmed inside Prescott Elementary School. The class action suit is looking for an annual medical monitoring and an establishment of a fund for financial expenses. I'm sure some people don't have the money to, you know, get their kids, you know, tested. To allow people to go to uh, their doctors or specialists and not have to pay out of pocket one dollar. I have reached out to the Scranton School District for comment and the solicitor has yet to get back to me. I also reached out to current, former, current and former board directors for comment. They're leaving that up to the solicitor. I will have much more on this lawsuit coming up on Eyewitness News at 6. For now, we're live in Scranton. Cody Butler. Eyewitness News. Against the Scranton School District. This comes just two weeks after lead and asbestos reports were released at a district meeting. And the suit is looking to establish a fund to provide annual medical checkups to all who may be affected. Eyewitness News reporter Cody Butler continues to follow this story. He joins us live outside federal court with more. Cody? Candace and Nick, good evening. Current employees and a former employee of the district filed the suit. William Prescott Elementary School Principal Albert O'Donnell, a reading teacher at Northeast Intermediate School, Rebecca O'Brien, and a retired district maintenance employee, George Gavaris, are all alleging the district did everything wrong to protect its students and staff. The Scranton School District continues to make headlines. This time, it and 15 current and former school board directors between 2016 and 2019 are defendants in the class action lawsuit over lead and asbestos. We just want it fixed. We want our schools to be safe for our children. You know, it's not much to ask for, especially just having clean water and clean air. Valerie Kaiser learned about the lawsuit when it was filed early Monday morning. The purpose of the lawsuit is to have a fund established to pay for annual medical monitoring for the 10,000 students and more than 1,000 teachers and anyone else that might be affected. As a parent, I wanted to get my own children tested just to see, you know, what the result would be. X-rays and CT scans and blood tests, well, all that costs money. Patrick Howard is representing the employees and others who may be affected. The suit claims the district knew or should have known its 18 buildings pose serious health risk and failed to take protective measures as early as 2016. That's when district officials conducted their own lead tests. How can the plaintiffs prove that these children are not exposed at their own home? Putting that aside, I mean, we know for a fact at this moment in time that they were in fact exposed at the school. Kaiser giving her son's principal credit for bringing this issue to light inside the court systems. I'm really grateful as a parent that he took on that that big that big task that all of the parents have kind of been wondering, you know, what to do. I have reached out to the Scranton School District for comment from the solicitor, but I have not heard back. I also reached out to current and former board directors for what they want to say on this matter, but they referred it to the solicitor. For now, we're live in Scranton. Cody Butler, Eyewitness News. Right, Cody, thank you. The lawyers in the suit say that they hope this case will be finished sooner rather than later. And this way, the fund will be set up for children, district staff, and anyone else who may be affected by lead and asbestos. Scranton School District is getting closer to reopening Northeast Scranton Intermediate School after receiving preliminary test results. Eyewitness News reporter Cody Butler joins us live outside Northeast with those results. Cody, is there any timeline when students might return? Mark, good evening. As of right now, no, but the school district and teachers union are hopeful that it will be soon as Northeast is going on its fourth week being closed.
I do see a light at the end of the tunnel. That light could soon be getting brighter. In the past two weeks, nearly 80 rooms inside Northeast Granton Intermediate School were tested for asbestos containing plasters. In a preliminary report conducted by Cocharty and Associates, only five rooms in the 1906 section contain asbestos. Nothing reported in the 1931 section. We're getting good data. We're going to work with the data and, and then remediate the problem as quickly as possible so that we can get everybody back into their home school. Rosemary Boland says members of the American Federation of Teachers or AFT brought in their own industrial hygienists to conduct their own testing. The results the same. So we're in concurrence and um, we believe our district is moving correctly to safeguard and protect the kids and our employees in the building. District Board President Katie Gilmartin says representatives with AFT agree with the district's decision to close Northeast three weeks ago. That based on the information that had been provided to us at that time, it was reasonable to engage in this more comprehensive testing and to remove the students from the building temporarily. Coach Hardy says they are working with the district on developing an interim plan to address asbestos and other potential environmental issues. Our environmental experts seem to feel it is reasonable to expect that this remediation can be accomplished somewhat quickly. Now the 900 students have relocated to West and South Scranton Intermediate Schools. Teachers and administrators tell me the situation is working out okay considering how many students they're dealing with. In Scranton, Cody Butler, Eyewitness News. Mark. Yep, some 900 students. Cody, thank you. The Scranton School Board is holding a work session Monday night at 7 at the administration building. Board directors will learn more about the comprehensive testing that's been done in the past two weeks. The public is welcome to attend. And the Scranton School District has been working on its asbestos remediation projects to make sure that the students can, if they would, eventually return to their classrooms. And for that, we turn to Eyewitness News reporter Cody Butler. Asbestos remediation at Northeast Granton Intermediate School has been completed. Contractors spent Monday doing exterior maintenance. In June, the Scranton School Board approved two contracts at $544,000 to finish asbestos remediation. As soon as we were alerted to this situation, we addressed the most emergent issues and then had a, a plan in place to deal with summer abatement work and, and regular maintenance through across the buildings in the district. In January, the district found 19 of its buildings had high levels of lead. They also found schools to have asbestos concerns. Paul Doherty, the district's director of operations, says, quote, as far as the asbestos, there have been both remediation and encapsulations completed in multiple district buildings. Some projects were minor, others were more encompassing. In January, the district closed four of its schools. Northeast was the only building to remain closed when students were sent home due to the COVID-19 pandemic in March. Meanwhile, remediation efforts continued. Although the, the steps of the process may not have been the way every single individual would have liked them to be, I know the safety of our students and staff was always the top priority. Katie Gilmartin, the district's board president, also sits on the environmental task force. Gilmartin says every six months, asbestos tests will be conducted with more in-depth testing every three years. Asbestos monitoring is an ongoing uh, task in a district of, with buildings of the age that they are. Cody Butler, Eyewitness News. We're told the remaining abatement of the asbestos is expected to be finished in the next couple of weeks, just in time for students to return to the classroom. However, in-person learning is unlikely if the board again votes like they did to have a virtual classroom setting at tonight's meeting. Three people in the Scranton School District have been arrested for an alleged cover-up. For months, Eyewitness News has been following the toxic school situation involving lead and asbestos in the district. And today, Attorney General Josh Shapiro spoke out about that investigation. Eyewitness News reporter Cody Butler joins us live tonight right outside the administration building. Cody? Nick and Candace, good evening. Shapiro called out the failed leadership of three administrators for not providing a healthy and safe environment for students, staff, and parents. In handcuffs, former Scranton School District Superintendent Alexis Kirian, former Chief Operating Officer Jeff Brazil, and current maintenance supervisor Joseph Slack walked into district court. We will be charging each defendant 
with endangering the welfare of children and recklessly endangering another person. Attorney General Josh Shapiro charges. unveiled parts of a grand jury report into the district's lead and asbestos problems. He shared his findings Wednesday at a news conference at the district's administration building. In 2016, the district found 298 water sources to have lead. 22 of those had dangerous levels that required an immediate response. In the same year, 74 spots in 12 buildings required urgent action for asbestos remediation. In 2018 and 2019, lead levels increased and 90% of the asbestos remained, according to a grand jury report. Kyrian and Brazil had a legal duty under the law to take action. Instead, the health of students, faculty, and staff remained in jeopardy for more than three years. A principal in the district alerted Kirian of ceilings falling apart, sending asbestos particles into the air. According to Shapiro, Kirian looked the other way and said not to send emails about the problem, only have conversations by phone. Kirian, Brazil, and Slack knew. And their silence, their cover up, and their inaction will now have consequences. Josh Shapiro said, made it a point in the news conference that this is still an active investigation and that there will be more to come. He also said all three administrators failed to inform the new administration of all of the problems. And I will have much more on that coming up on Eyewitness News at 6. For now, we're live in Scranton. Cody Butler, Eyewitness News.